My name is Adam. Like I said, I'm here with uh, Fishing Auto Channel. Today we are going to go a little bit more in depth on what I believe and others believe is can be a very important part of the hobby, which is target feeding your corals. on the hobby side and as a professional side, I myself find it's very important to allow corals to get supplement food other than fish food. Um, certain corals pull both calcium and alkalinity out of the water for their structure, but they also need food and um, proteins and stuff to create their flesh. Things like chalices, euphelias, um, symphelias, lobos, walsos, etc. Um, today we are going to be doing some target feeding with Coral Frenzy's food, um, both powder size and pellets. Part of why I believe in, in, in target feeding is, especially when you have a very filled system and you're worrying about nutrient management, the broadcast feeding doesn't always work well for your corals. Um, take a hammer colony, for instance. Um, each branch is technically its own little life force. In order for you to feed a whole euphelia, it would, you would either need to heavily target, heavily broadcast feed a tank, which could result in a ridiculous amount of nitrates, phosphates, ammonia, and all that. But what happens is the amount of food you would waste doing this is pretty much unheard of. So the advantage of target feeding would be allowing the, to make sure giant colonies, bigger pieces that require meat, to make sure they're getting an ample amount of food in their diet to continue to both grow their calcium and the flesh side of things. Like I was saying, some of the pros with, cor with, with feeding corals obviously is the one we all look for. A pro is most times uh, is going to increase your coral's growth, um, also increases the health. Um, like I said, usually when corals are given the food source they need versus some starving for it, the growth pattern tends to be a little bit better because they're not struggling to pull anything in. They have the food, the proteins they need, as well as the calcium alkalinity, pretty much what we call all the recipes for success. Now there is a catch to it. You can overfeed your corals. Um, what some people do is they will try to overfeed a small piece of say silver side um, to a small scoli or something, which can cause a lot of problems, both for the coral and for the tank. Um, if you overfeed a coral, you can actually kill it. Um, coral, just like us, does pull in food, does create waste. If you're forcing the coral to take in more food than, the, than it can actually break down and release, you almost pretty much are guaranteed that the food is going to spoil inside the coral, which can cause a bacterial infection, which is pretty hard to test for in any water qualities. And once it gets going, it's pretty much hard to stop, especially once it's inside. Another con to um, overfeeding uh, could be, like I said, very high nutrients. Um, if you have a very busy tank, you don't, you know, you're kind of managing your, your nutrient export. If you find yourself overfeeding corals, what's going to happen is the corals only take up so much and then the less of the rest of the food will be left to waste, which is gonna increase your nitrates, your phosphates, your ammonia, and pretty much all that, which could not only resort to death of fish, but it could also resort to algae outbreaks, cyano outbreaks, um, unstable water parameters, tissues having stressed out issues, polyps not opening. The list can go on once happens when you get too nutrient. Um, as we all know, nutrients are important in the water, but you wanna make sure you're doing everything in proper portions. So today we're gonna to be using two products by Coral Frenzy. One is their one millimeter reef pellets, which is specialized, gonna be mostly good for blastos, chalices, um, scolies, acans, um, more stuff like that. Even can be used for things like uh, euphelias, torches, frog spawns, stuff like that. Um, the other food we're gonna to use today is kind of crossing the other side of the spectrum. She's gonna be good for things like zoas, pallies, ganiporas, and SPS. Um, now the only thing with the powder food is one thing that a lot of people don't realize is uh, it is great for target feeding, things like your softies. Um, pallies do have a much better ability to actually pull food in. Um, so if you're ever going to feed things, uh, pallies and zoas with the powdered site, you wanna make sure you kill the flow. Um, as for zoas, they have a much harder time being smaller, actually grabbing any particles and bringing them into the mouth versus pallies. Um, so other than that, uh, we're also gonna use this, like I said, as far as feeding SPS. This also goes good for ganiaporas, 
You can even use it for Monty Poras, um, short tentacle ganis and stuff like that. Uh, what we're gonna do to administer the food for both is I have a, uh, we have two fine tips, um, but I grounded one down um, to be a better size. What I like to use is a longer syringe. Um, what this does is this keeps a better chance of you keeping your hands out of the tank. Um, one of the biggest issues people don't realize is when you put lotions, oils, and things like that on, um, any residues can go in your tank and cause an issue. Um, so we recommend using fine point or wide point syringes depending on what food you're gonna do. Obviously feeding a small particle in a wide point is not the brightest idea and vice versa. So today we'll be using these tools to just get more of a close target range to feeding the corals without aggravating them or putting our hands in the tank. So today, uh, quick recap, um, we did some target feeding on a lot of LPS corals today. Uh, we did a variation uh, from acans, blastos, scolies, we even did a couple euphelia, um, just kind of show different feeding response to different size uh, particle food. Um, some of the advice I can give some of my fellow reefers out there. Um, when feeding, make sure you're feeding the right size micron food to the right size coral. Uh, it's a common sense thing, shouldn't have to say this, but you don't want to be putting a one millimeter pellet on top of a zoanthid, and you don't want to be trying to feed uh, euphelias and scolies with powderized food. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're, you're obviously feeding um, the right one. Um, just giving you a little bit more on my beliefs behind corals and the food. Um, a lot of people always have questions whether target feeding can actually help change color, color, uh, coral coloration. Um, I don't believe it can. What I do believe though is that giving the corals the proper amount of nutrients they need across the spectrum, if a coral does have the ability to show pinks, you're giving it a better chance to show pinks. Some things are, we'll say, element-based kind of things as we know with like potassiums and iodine and stuff like that bring out certain colors in SPS. Uh, I believe food can help bring out colors that are in your uh, other corals, even considering your SPS. Um, so it is definitely something that uh, the main thing you're doing is your target feeding is you're pretty much saying listen You're gonna be the best you can be in the most optimal environment. I can put you in um, So it's pretty much what you're doing is you're setting your corals and yourself up for better success long term with both keeping your investment alive and keep your investment growing um, Again, make sure you do not overfeed um, If you guys go back a lot of the pieces we fed today are pretty good sized pieces even the, the small blasto 
as you see, we only put about five or six small pellets on there. We didn't douse him with it for him to be overwhelmed. You wanna make sure that the coral is pretty much eating, and if he's a little bit hungry after, don't go ahead and push it. You don't wanna feed the coral until they stop. Just like your fish, uh, a coral will continue to try to eat even past its point of full, um, which could cause, like we've discussed in the previous part, can cause bacterial problems uh, within the coral tissue, within the coral skeleton, uh, and stuff like that. Um, always another piece of advice when target feeding, it's always best to turn off your tank, turn off the pumps. Also try to feed your tank prior to target feeding. As you'll see in the video, we had our hands filled trying to keep uh, certain fish from picking out the food out of the scoli and out of the blastos. So also with that, usually I used to tell people set yourself a, a audio timer, usually on your phone. This way in the case that you do leave the tank off, your phone will notify you to turn it back on. On average, you wanna leave the circulation pump, the return pump off for about 10 minutes just to make sure that the brunt of the food is being consumed and not being thrown in your filter. And I usually tell people to keep the power heads off for about a half an hour. This way the coral is not fighting the flow to pull in the food. At the end of the day, we're here to help the coral. A lot of times corals feed during when tides change, which is why a lot of times corals feed at night. Um, usually you'll get better feeding response. Also some corals, as you can see in the video, do require a little bit of patience when target feeding. What we usually recommend doing is giving them a small amount to get them awoke and then proceed with your normal amount to feed them once they are actually alert and you have the tentacles out. Again, my name is Adam. I'm with Blue Earth Corals and Aquariums. And by all means, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, do not hesitate to find me on Facebook or to reach out to us on our, uh, on our website. You can also check out our products and our, and our employees at www.blueearthaquariums.com or blueearthcorals.com. Thank you guys again, and we hope this video helps you guys out. Thank you.